Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to June's Monthly Roundup, the video where I tell you all about the changes to my board game collection. Hello and welcome to the sweat box that is July. Um, it is absolutely roasting in here and I don't even live in a country where you're all passing out from the heat. Um, yeah, it's just warm being in here filming and this is the second video I've made today. So I'm kind of roasting. So maybe we'll like rush through this thing. Um, shall we see? Um, so yeah, I have a number of new games to talk about. Um, I have a couple of games to talk about that I've been playing. Um, but yeah, I'm getting rid of the trade section. It's seems completely unnecessary in a post-Brexit world, um, pretty much. And the wish list section is becoming practically invisible because I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like there's anything super exciting to be buying at the moment that isn't a Kickstarter of sorts. Um, I'd love to hear if you're excited about any releases or the problem is I'm waiting on releases, but they're taking their time. So yeah, not as much to be excited about board game wise, but I do have a whole bunch of new Kickstarter stuff to share with you. I've been very busy this month with that. Um, so as always, um, for those of you uninitiated, this is the video where I'm going to talk about my board games, but um, I don't want to do it in a vacuum. You have to help me because I as much and all as I enjoy talking about my games, I also love hearing about yours. And I'm sure the, the other viewers want to hear about yours in the comments as well. Um, so I'm hoping we can kind of get a dialogue going over the stuff we're liking or the stuff we're not liking, because it's always good, I think, to talk about your games. So let's launch right in and I will start with the games that I have purchased. Um, and the first one this month Yes, is actually uh, my husband got this one, but this is Azul Summer Pavilion. So I am a little bit behind the times when it comes to Azul. I have the original and possibly the best version still. Um, and there have been two other versions of Azul. And I've heard, I heard mixed things about the middle one, the stained glass, the Sinatra one. I've heard really good things about this Summer Pavilion one, but I wasn't sure I wanted to mess with what I considered it to be a winning formula. I kind of like Azul just the way it is. So my husband was shopping in town and came back with a board game, so I'm not going to complain. Um, and we've played it just once, as in because we literally got it the other day. Um, and it is, it's different to the other results. I'm going, well, well the other results all I'm going to say um, in the sense that the pattern is kind of like numbers it builds out you're basically you're doing now the floor instead of the wall with the tiles the tiles are on kind of leaf shapes and you're fitting them into this kind of circular shape or well actually it's not circle like isn't that picture <laughs> sitting here going it's a triangle no it's not it's like a rosette it's a star that's the word it's a star um and you get points for um how much of these stars and things you can fill in you can unlock bonuses um, by building around like statues and windows and things like that and in my mind when i sat in with it initially i was like this ain't gonna work just logistically, I was like, there's no chance of you being able to fill out all of these different stars. Um, so obviously you should focus on certain ones. They're in particular colors, right? So you have to get loads of each color to be able to fill them out. And I'm like, just the chances of that coming out of the bag and the chances that my uh, husband wouldn't also need some of these colors seemed weird. Um, so yeah, I felt like the game um, was a... I don't know, maybe I had bad expectations, but I felt like it was impossible just from the setup. Now, maybe that gets better over time. I've only played it once and you all know how the first game of anything goes where we'd 50 questions and the rule book just didn't want to answer them. Namely my one being so that for anybody who's played it, maybe you can write in and tell me so that when you're filling out the stars, there are numbers around them. And that's the number of tiles you need to have kind of in your stock um, to be able to fill in that portion. Um, and I wanted to know if I had like seven blue tiles, could I put like three into the three slot and two into the two slot and one into the one slot? Or did I have to all go into like one place? Can I spread them out? And um, I had a difficult time figuring that out from either the rule book or the example. So I don't know, like I said, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. It is nice looking. Um, it's got a weird tower thing that you can put um, the tiles that you're tossing away into so they go in back into the bag easier, which I guess is a good idea. Um, but so far I'm just like, why do we give up an original is all? Well, well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Um, but we'll see. I'm not going to give up just yet. <laughs> just color be discouraged a little, but not entirely. Okay. Um, okay. So that is the first game we've bought. The second one we've not bought, um, we've bought but not played yet is Anno. Oh, let's 1800. Let's guess 1600, 1800. Um, it's a Martin Wallace game with industrialness on it. So um, we're happy with that and um, that came out before Christmas but only in German so we've been waiting for ages for the English version from Cosmos Games um, only looked inside the box it's a very Cosmos Games looking game it's not particularly fancy um, but hopefully the gameplay will be good because we do rather like Martin Wallace games around here every time I look at it I'm like I, re I really need to play brass more <laughs> It's always one of those things. Um, so yeah, so that's why um, we got that because we've been waiting for it to be in English. Um, so those are the two games that we purchased. Mm -hmm. There's two other games I'm waiting to purchase, but they're not back in stock yet. So we just got to hold out hope. Um, so yeah, I'd love to know what you guys um, bought in the, the past month, um, if anything. What have you been getting up to? Or is there anything you're waiting on that's caught your eye? Because I'm waiting on Praga, Ragged Nuti. I'm not even going to try finish it. Um, to come into stock and beyond the sun with the big tech tree one looks great um but yeah stock fun all right so now we'll jump into the review copies which i assume you kind of want to hear about um so yeah of course i'm going to re be reviewing them so there'll be a whole section um so you can so you can listen to the, my full thoughts um but i just thought i'll share with you what's come in and what i've thought of these so far if i've even got to them okay so the first thing i'm going to talk about is Turing. Um, literally because I just filmed it. Um, so that, this is due soon. This is coming to Kickstarter, I believe, in July the 19th. Um, and this is a very small card game that would remind you of Dixit or Mysterium in the sense that you are trying to guess via art um, if the answers have come from a human player or from an AI player. Um, so yeah, it's that kind of idea of I place out these three pictures that should hopefully connect to an original picture and the game provides some random ones and then people have to decide whether the random pile was yours or the random pile belonged to the AI um, and that's uh, the concept behind it it's got some uh, really nice art I think it'll make for a good party game didn't go down great here with me but then again there's only two of us trying to play a guessing game I don't know how well that was ever going to work um, but if those games are your jam and you'd like kind of a tidy version of it you can check out my review soon or see what it's like on Kickstarter okay next Ah, yes. Um, so Canine Capers. Um, so this comes from Atakin Games. Um, you may have known them from their mint tins, um, which they've done kind of the player survival kit. So for instance, you could buy a tin that had all pink player pieces, if that's your player color, and you could carry it around with a tin and have it with you. And she's also released um, other games as well, but this is the, the newest one. So she's got canine capers and feline felonies. <laughs> um, and what these games are about, they, they come in a tin and I have the dog one. And it's basically based on the notion that there are dogs um, looking for clues and trying to solve mysteries out in the world um, and this I just think it's really funny because it's of course you know if you have a dog you know what I'm on about they have perceived threats out there um, and <laughs> just, the notion of the dogs were going out hunting out for, for suspicious activity um, I found really really funny um, so there's also a, a cat version and you can play the cat and dog version together and they'll make it different game which I think is kind of cool um, the game wasn't for me um, a bit on the simplistic side for my liking but I think if you like a family or that um, I think you might kind of like it um, I love the idea anyway I think it's cute so that's um, also coming to Kickstarter in a bit um, what's next let's look down at my trusty phone all right so we'll go with this one next so this is Beyond the Rift from Dragon's Dawn per Dragon Dawn Production I'm always putting an S in it I'm so sorry I don't know why I think the dragon is possessive of its dawn but there you go dragon dawn production um so yeah this is beyond the rift a paradition's mouth card game 
Anybody who's been here for a long, long time might remember that I once reviewed a game called Perdition's Mouth, the Bissell Rift, some time ago now. It's a big uh, miniature game, dungeon kind of crawler, but with lots of Euro aspects to it. Um, and you can always go check out my review if you really want to. But now they've made a card game and it's coming to Kickstarter also, I believe, on July the 19th. Yeah, I hope I'm keeping all my dates in order here. Um, this is a really interesting game because it's taking a very, very big game into a much smaller space um, and it's one I really liked it's based around it's a, it's a card game so you know you play as one of these characters and part of the story they all have their own unique deck that plays a particular way um, and basically what you do is, is cooperatively you're taking on kind of these monsters and stuff that will appear all while unfurling a story it's like a bunch of stories together it's like a little campaign um, what's cool about this one I think is that you get to touch your deck a lot. I love that phrase, um, which basically means it's the kind of game where you're gonna draw a lot of cards, you're gonna play this with this, with this, with this. It's got a really nice cooperative element where you can play cards on other people's cards to like make big attacks and things like that. Um, and overall, I really, really liked it. Um, I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, it's very cool to see a big game go to something small. I think they've done a really good job with this. And if you like dungeon crawling, uh, but don't want the big, box or the big price tag i think it captures that kind of feel um so yeah so check out their kickstarter on july the 19th um and my review which is coming soon all right what have we got left uh i closed the page back and come on phone yes i keep all my notes on my phone because I'm, I'm wise like that Ah yes, okay, so there is one more, and this is Red Rising from Stonemaier Games. Um, so there was a big kind of hubbub about this when it came out first, and then bleh, flatlined. Um, but the opportunity came up to review it, and I, I like, I kind of like getting to stuff that was popular later and seeing what did it deserve it or whatnot. <laughs> So Red Rising is a game based on a book I have not read. Boo, maybe I should. It definitely sounds like something I would read. It's kind of dystopian future where people are in different class systems except their colors. And in the game, you basically have a handful of characters who come from different colors. And your job is to kind of basically build the best hand of kind of joint scoring objectives, right? So the cards will do a thing when you play them, but they will also have a scoring portion on the bottom if you keep them. So one might say, if your hand is full of yellow cards, um, get 30 points. Or another one might say, if you match it with a particular named character, it will be worth other points. Um, and so the game revolves around you um, all basically slowly but surely changing your opening hand into like the best scoring hand you can make. Um, unsurprisingly, it is, it is gorgeous and entirely overproduced as usual from Stonemaier Games, but I ain't complaining. It's got gold foil on the gold cards. It's got like this special tray for holding the tokens you know it's way over the top um but you know what i kind of love it um so it's fine but it is at its core a, a simple card game where you're swapping one thing in and out for another i've been told it's very like um uh, fantasy realms <laughs> i'm trying not to say hero realms fantasy realms i think it's called um but i've not played that so i've not been disappointed so i'll keep it with that i'm not sure how much longevity the game has however um but i'll give it some more plays yeah i've only had a couple of kind of initial plays um and that is coming as well so there's ah, so much busyness going on right now um yeah you, you can tell you can tell you know it's bad when i'm filming two videos in one day let alone one week so um, yeah lots of excitement going on here lots of things to get to um, I hope your house has been as exciting as mine um, with all these kind of things to play and especially wasn't there like a prime day sale and there's all sorts of cool stuff going on at Target and I don't know I'm just guessing a base and I've seen people's hauls a lot lately um, and I don't know if I miss having my own haul or not I don't know. I think I'm quite content with where board games are at, but it makes it difficult to come to you and tell you guys, well, I didn't buy 50 games this month. It's funny how much of kind of board game media relies upon you having bought a lot of board games and playing them all of the time, um, that it can't be a casual affair of sorts. But anyway, so yeah, tell me about what you've been up to. I'm dying to hear it all. And which one of my reviews are you looking forward to the most? Which game sounded the most entertaining or at least, you know, worth a second look? Um, that's always an important question. All right, so normally we do trades, 
Eh, eh, no trades. That was supposed to be crossing it out. There we go. Um, and we will jump right into the games I've been playing because I have some things to report back on from last month. It is so ridiculously warm in here. Um, okay, we're already there. Okay, so we're on to the section where I'm going to talk about the games um, I've been playing. And I'm going to start with the one that arrived last month that I said I knew nothing about, but suddenly seems to be like all the rage. And this is Imperium Classics from Osprey Games. Um, and oh boy, is this a, a story and a half. I'm still letting a lot of it digest. So um, Imperium Classics is a deck it's not a deck building game, it's a card game in which you play as a civilization. Your civilization is a deck of cards and your civilization will advance as you um, kind of go through your deck. So every time you kind of empty your deck, you get to add some sort of kind of progress into it. Um, so you'll be building things out on the table in front of you. You'll be having cards to activate with different abilities and depending on what um, kind of nation or group you're playing as, um, your deck will function very differently and do different things. So, you know, like the Vikings like to give out fire and incite riots a lot, which also makes sense, but they have very little development. Um, and that, that kind of idea. Um, and when I saw it first, I was so excited because um, it's been a while since I've seen a kind of a good card game i suppose i think they all seem to be coming at once now that i haven't seen them in a while and i was really excited about playing as all these ancient kind of civilizations and stuff um the rule book is uh, a bit problematic we had a hard time getting going um and the game itself is interesting and kind i don't know see <laughs> this is the thing i'm gonna explain this the following way I'm not sure how much fun I had while playing the game, but I played it eight times in the first day or two that we had it. Um, I couldn't stop going back to it. I feel like there are a number of issues with it, um, namely, so like each, um, I keep wanting to call them, I suppose civilization might be the right word, but then that implies that everyone else is uncivilized or something. But anyway, I don't like that word. Um, that each civilization has a special shtick they can do that they're basically you know that they start with and that seems to imply the kind of actions you want to do on your turn so for example the carthaginians say oh you want lots of trade tokens to score points and i went cool i'll get trade tokens but there's actually very little ways to do that um and to be able to kind of add to it was difficult so it seems like it's telling you there's a particular engine in place but not entirely true um there's also a mechanic where you can kind of burn down everything you have to go and get a, a better card um, to put into your deck. Um, and these better cards really are very good. There are a lot of victory points and they'll do something cool. Um, and myself, nor my husband could figure out a reason why you wouldn't want to do this. Um, <laughs> Um, why you wouldn't want the better card. It was just kind of our play style. Um, but it definitely changed how the game was played. Um, so yeah, I've played a lot of this game and on the one hand, I really like it. I think, I just think, I think it's so close to being good. I think that's, or not even being good, being great, I suppose is the word, because every so often I kind of lose myself in it. Um, but then there's always the issue of, well, where are we actually trying to get with this <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm still figuring it out i i think there's something good here i genuinely do i think the game might just be a little bit too structured for my taste in the sense that there is a specific way to play these things and if you play them that way it will work very well for you um but beyond that you know it feels like certain parts of the game are there just to further other parts of the game not further kind of in their own right um yeah i i don't know I'm, I'm still i'm still thinking about it i just know i've played a lot of it it's very addictive and for a game that takes like an hour and a half to two hours to play and has very long down to, like there's a lot of downtime between turns like i'll take my turns and you may as well be waiting like 10 minutes and vice versa um it's must have something special in it to overcome that that by itself so um yeah i'll report back with with further duties but so far so interesting i don't think i've played anything and quite like it and um, and I like where it's going I just don't feel like it's all the way there but close maybe anyway it needs some more plays just yet so we'll, we'll, I'll come back when I played it another 40 times of course um yeah so that's Imperium Classics 
Right, so next on the agenda of games um, that have come out this month, um, I'm going to come back and mention an oldie but a goodie, and this is Las Vegas. Um, so I managed to have one friend round to play games, which was kind of nice. Um, thank God for bubbles and things like that. Um, and we we played a game, and instantly um, our friend just went, "Oh, I just don't, I don't want anything too complicated. Can we just play something easy?" And I'm like, "I know the game for you. I'm very good at this, and this is Las Vegas." Las Vegas is the game I will never understand but will always enjoy um, and it is a game in which you there are a series of casinos with cash and you have a number of dice with which to roll and when you roll your dice you've got to put all the dice with the same number of pips onto a casino so you're probably going to want to put one you know on the one with all the money or whatever but everyone's doing the same thing and it's only the person with the most pips at the casino gets the cash so it is a game of dice rolling and deciding where your dice will go and as always it really hit the mark um i don't understand why the game is fun it doesn't sound like it should be but it is and it's one that always surprises me um and it went down really really well um so i i love that when i take something off the shelf and i've just got i've got it just right i'm like i know the game for this and this is las vegas so i can't recommend it highly enough um for such an oldie but a goodie um yeah it's always a bit of a crowd pleaser um, so yeah, so that's Las Vegas. And then the last thing I played, although I've played a lot of singular games as opposed to multiple games, but what I'm going to talk about anyway, because I guess this monthly roundup wouldn't be right unless I mentioned some level 99 game. Um, and I'm going to talk about Battlecon. Um, Battlecon, I believe Unleashed is the name of the ones with all the big boxes, but also this in is its own kind of debate, right? Um, so. Battlecon is a is a fighting game where both you and your opponent take on characters with special abilities and powers and you'll play them and in initiative order you'll move, punch each other, hit each other, you'll move around, you'll do magical things depending on who you are. It's kind of a fantasy battle thing. Um, it's very very fun, it's very tactical, it wrecks my head but we've always liked it and there's a ton and tons of tons of content for it and so however many moons ago we it was on Kickstarter and you could get a big box with all the took boxes for all the characters and the new um, expansion that came out and we were like you know what we really like Battlecon let's do this um, at the moment we have a tendency of backing expansions on Kickstarter and then completely ignoring the game from then on out <laughs> I don't know if anybody else does this or is it just me but it's just like the, I don't know what it is. It's like the curse of the Kickstarter. So the box for Battlecon showed up. It must have been before Christmas, and we sorted all of the all of the characters and things into the tuck boxes, and then it sat there, and we didn't touch it because this is the curse of the Kickstarter. Um, and recently we decided we're like, well, we're gonna we're gonna try and play some more of this. We really should try. But it's funny that. <laughs> I don't know. I want basically. I want to know. Does this happen to you? Do you buy expansions for games and then the game gets completely ignored forever? Um, I think this is just a thing, but I don't know if it's just a Kickstarter thing either. Because normally, what happens is we'll go, "Oh, we've backed the Kickstarter for this, so we better not play it till the expansion shows up," and then the game just gets forgotten about. Um, so I really didn't want that to happen to Battlecon, so we pulled it out for a little game at the weekend. There are a number of problems with um, the new printing on the cards because they tried to tidy up the wording and then somehow made it worse. And now the irony is if you want the fixed version of the cards, you have to pay to get them shipped if you'd like those. Not overly impressed with that because shipping something like what twenty five dollars or so, something crazy for like eight cards, um, which is kind of annoying. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I do like the game a lot, and I'd love to know does anyone else play kind of fighting style games? Because um, I normally wouldn't. It's not normally my jam, but this one feels so much more than that. It doesn't feel like a fighty game. It feels more like a, a tactical thing. I guess they all do, but it's it's one of my favorite two player games. There's a lot to it though. There's a lot going on. Um, I think there's a part of me that likes that sneaky elitism of I can play, I'm I'm good enough to play this and to follow what's going along with it, I guess. Um, eh, maybe not so much, but there's, some, there's something about being able to master something that you thought was difficult that feels really worthwhile. Um, so yeah, so that is Battlecon. So I think that's enough talk about the games I've been playing. 
Let's hear about yours and tell me about your Kickstarter experiences. Do you get the extras from Kickstarter for a game you like and then, then sit it on a shelf? Tell me it's not me. <laughs> tell me I'm not the problem. I probably am. Um, but yeah, so that's the stuff and I wanna hear about yours. Okay, so we've done all the business, business, business bit. Um, now we'll go to the bit where I'm going to talk for a little bit of just about, I don't know, the channels, the personal stuff, gaming in general. I don't know, um, if you follow me over there, you can find out what, what I say because I'm not sure what it is yet. So, in short, this has been a very funny and unusual month. Um, some of you may remember I've been working with Ren Games for their Kickstarter for Pilfering Pandas, which successfully funded, hurrah, and the campaign is over. I was like, hurrah, um, and now I'm wrecked. <laughs> um, unsurprising, I suppose. Um, I, had a lot of, I had a lot of fun with it and it was great working with Ren Games, but oh Lord, did I learn a lot about myself. Um, oh, geez. Um, yeah, I just, Oh, I'm so, it's so easy for me to get stressed about things that normal people don't stress about. Like absolutely everything puts me on edge and I don't, I just don't handle it well. Um, and the only way I handle it is by working harder, which can often put, make me more stressed. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny place to be in. And I've been so worried for so long about whether the campaign was going well, whether I was doing the right thing, whether this was enough, whether, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then for all of it to suddenly stop. And I, I was looking for, I was looking forward to the stopping, but then it was just, okay, what do we do now? And you know what we do now? I have a ton of work to do because I've kind of been not quite putting things on the back burner, but I definitely feel like I can only have a, a focus on one thing at a time. And so my focus had been on the Kickstarter and all that kind of stuff. And then now as all of a sudden it's like, well, you've got all this stuff you've got to deal with. And a lot of it has, you know, timeframes. So I am now in the process of, oh my God, I'm dying, but I have so much stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> um and whatnot and I but I, do, I don't think this is necessarily the cause of all of my my issues I just oh I think I'm just tired as well um but I just goes to highlight I suppose that um I really should remember that I'm not I'm not at the same place everybody else is in their lives um doing their things and stuff I see um like other people seem to take it so um easy to be able to just function um whereas i have to give myself so much more time um to make sure i can get things done in a in a reasonable way so it's much harder um to kind of get to push myself to get something done because it just seems to whew, just burn me out even further um and i will say though and thanks for all your well wishes you guys are always really really sweet but I'm not really looking for sympathy or anything like that. This is just kind of the day to day of it all. You know, this is just my life is always going to be up and down. I'm mostly going to be down and I'll have some times when I'm up and that'll be nice. And then I'll probably worry my way out of it and make myself miserable again. But that's just kind of, you know, who I am. And the other thing I think that's messing with me a bit at the minute, because I'm finding it very hard to get back into board games when I really need to be doing stuff, um, is I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm very close to a thousand subscribers and that's scary that's scary as hell um because a i don't handle good things well i get really upset when nice things happen to me and b this is something i've been working towards since i started right um and it's crazy to think i might actually get there like what do we do after this? Like this, this was the plan. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's something, I think there's something going on there in my mind um, about, well, what does it mean to have reached that? That I don't think I'm ready to think about just yet because I'm too busy um, with all the other stuff. Um, yeah, I hate feeling rushed. I want to give everything loads of time and effort and my full attention. Um, but this is just how it is. It's just, it's a busy time at the moment. But um, otherwise we've been getting a good number of videos I think on the channel I'm, do, I'm doing my best with that um so yeah <laughs> so that works um I've been working around in the backdrop and stuff in here we're getting places um and I'm working my way through everything so there's still plenty of content to come 
which is I suppose always good and in my spare time I have been painting miniatures I maybe I've gone mad I don't know but it seems to be a good hobby with, for in between the hobbies um, and it's something nice to do in the afternoon I don't know how people feel about me posting pictures and things like that um, on Twitter I was posting what I was doing every day I feel a little bit odd about that because I'm not sure how secular you need to be um, to be of a particular so like I've always posted about board board games board games board games board games it's in the title does that mean I shouldn't talk about other games like does that mean that people would feel isolated do people prefer having focus you know streams like that you know if I was following someone I don't know who only talked about role-playing games and then started talking about something else would I would I unfollow I I don't know I think the world wants you on the internet to be focused. I am this channel and I do this thing. You know, I don't think um, algorithms and stuff appreciate the diversity that you could bring to, um, you know, your own channel. I think they want to pigeonhole you like that. So I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about, about all of that yet, but you know. <laughs> Right, okay, I probably should start wrapping this up because um, it's way too hot in here to be trying to tell you things. I suppose the, 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 main, the main thing is I, I'm tired, I'm not feeling it, but there's a lot to do. And gosh darn it, I'm going to get it done because I always do. Um, <laughs> and somewhere in there, it'll be fun. Uh, I'm like, I'm so fortunate to be able to have these kinds of problems, but I can't divorce myself from the fact that I'm only a human being too. Um, and sure, there are lots of people who would like to be kind of as busy and things as I am when it comes to the review copies and whatnot. Um, I have to remember that, yeah, I'm just, a, I'm just a person. I've got my own problems and I have to do things in my own way. Um, and I don't, I don't want people to think this as I'm complaining because I'm not. This is just how it is and I'm dealing with it and I will get there as always and hopefully next month I'll have more exciting stories um when things settle down a bit and I can breathe a bit um but yeah so that's that's it that's been that's been June <sighs> and it's warm really warm is it what's the temperature where you're at actually what temperature is it here let's see according to my phone it is now my phone used to tell me these things or maybe I imagined my phone told me how warm it is. Is that possible? Oh, oh, it was hiding. Okay, it's 15 degrees apparently Celsius here. <laughs> so I don't believe the phone for a minute. It must just be warm in this room. All right, everybody, take care. I look forward to seeing you all next month and hearing about all your board game adventures. Please do, please do share. All right, thanks everybody. Take care, bye-bye.